Welcome back to the AL.com Film Room. I'm Matt Scalisi here with Cole Kublik, our Auburn football analyst. And we're going to be breaking down Auburn's win over Ole Miss. We're going to look at the defense today for Auburn. Uh, interesting, interesting game for the Auburn defense. They, they made some big plays defensively, obviously forced some big turnovers, uh, but obviously gave up some big plays as well. Just overall, what were some of the biggest concerns looking at Auburn's defensive performance in this game? I would say discipline more than anything else. The, uh, you, you turned a few guys loose. Uh, there was obviously some responsibility issues, whether that was keeping rush lane integrity, whether it was just making tackles. We'll see a couple plays where you got three, four guys in place to make a tackle and it ends up being a long touchdown run. And then, of course, the penalties and stupid penalties. Listen, effort penalties are something. That's going to happen. But knocking guys down when they're three and four seconds out of bounds or three, four yards out of bounds, it's just inexcusable. And in some of the penalties, if they continue like they were in this game, especially on the defensive side of the football, because they didn't continue drives, they just aided drives. It's bad enough when you have a penalty that on a third and eight, when somebody gets a six-yard gain, you give them the first down and continue a drive. It's really bad when somebody has a 50-yard gain, you turn into a 65-yard gain. So the penalties must stop or at least be cut down, cut in half, if this team's going to be successful the rest of the season. All right, Cole, overall, uh, kind of a, a pretty good day for Auburn's defense when it comes to rushing the passer. They, they were able to get to Bo Wallace a good bit. Um, you know, talk about the, the defensive line's performance overall you felt like in this game. Well, it's not only getting to the quarterback, it's containing the quarterback. If you're not going to get him to the ground, you definitely have to keep him in the pocket and force him to make a throw. And Bo Wallace is one of those guys that it, it, he has sneaky mobility. He's not very fast. A straight line speed is not going to burn you. But he understands maneuvering the pocket. He understands escaping the pocket. And when he finds space, he can really break you down and, and he can hurt you. He's a guy that went into the Alabama game earlier this season with more attempts than rushing yards on the season. And obviously that's turned around since then. He has proven not only on design runs, but from his capability, he can really hurt you with his legs. And we'll see here, a blitz going to be dialed up and nice pressure going to come from the outside. You see a little pressure going to come from the inside, but the confusion is really here inside, really at this defensive tackle spot at the bottom, going to lose some rush lane integrity because Casanova McKenzie is going to have the middle of this pass rush kind of worked out. So you've got to keep that B gap contained right here and not allow Bo Wallace to escape. Pretty good coverage on the back end. The pressure's picked up initially, but he knows he's got to get outside of the pocket. And then just too much space in front of him, honestly. Lacan Treadwell, a couple nice blocks down the field. Shows you that he can be more than just an excellent receiver of the football. And here will give us really kind of a great picture as we can go back and take a look of kind of what we talk about with rush lane integrity. You're going to get one speed rush to the outside, and then this is going to neutralize the middle of the field. But you've got to keep your rush lane integrity right here when you come up the field. If you give this guy two gaps, basically two gaps right here to hurt you, He's not super fast, but that's enough space for him to break down. And as you can see, it just, it's kind of the way it worked out. It's not really a missed assignment by anybody. But again, you got to understand at that defensive end spot, when to peel back and come help. And then being knocked to the ground when you're rushing the passer is obviously something that's not good as well. All right, Cole. Very next play after that long run, which was, as you mentioned earlier, it was aided by another penalty by Auburn. Uh, Ole Miss deep in the red zone here for Auburn. They're able to get the touchdown to tread well. You know, it's frustrating when you see screens and quick passes this close to the goal line work. It's not supposed to really work that way because when you get down inside the red zone, when you get around the 10, things are compacted. So usually the same plays that work in between the 30s, from a numbers perspective, should not work this close to the goal line. And you'll see it's just going to be just a quick screen to tread well, and like you mentioned, a nice job by a couple offensive linemen getting out and throwing some blocks. Uh, a little bit of a high-low on one of the Auburn defenders here. And a couple blocks, and you see Treadwell is just going to make Auburn pay. When you get down near the goal line, though, you shouldn't see plays like that really and truly work because things should be jammed in together and there should be too much traffic, but nonetheless, solid execution from Ole Miss. And again, poor tackling by the Auburn defense. Similar to what we talked about that Gus Malzahn does earlier in the week, visual deception, motions, reverses, different guys. There's a lot of moving parts to this offense, and you'll see a couple defensive linemen kind of heading this way and some confusion with the linebackers, not really understanding what play is coming at them. 
you get that jet sweep motion with a back and a receiver. So you got two guys coming across and then obviously the reverse, the opposite direction. It's really a nice play call here, executed well. You don't need a lot of blocks when the defense flows with that initial front. And then Bo Wallace, you see him downfield coming to try and make a play as well. This really and truly more than anything else in my opinion was just having the defense off guard, reverse called at the right time, and not enough recognition from the Auburn defense, especially that front seven, when you got two, three guys from the secondary have to come over and make a play. Well, Matt, we can talk about different things when this defense, penalties, we've talked about blowing coverages, but the tackling more than anything else at this point in the season I think has to be a concern because you're more than halfway through the year and this should not be an issue. Right here we'll see just a nice little tight end dump to Evan Ingram. Great recognition from Bo Wallace. You can see Auburn shown blitz. A lot of defenders at the line of scrimmage. He knows he's going to have to get rid of this football quickly. Good recognition to notice that his tight end is going to be his target. Gets rid of the football quickly. And then Ingram, has, he's not your normal tight end. He's kind of that hybrid tight end guy, so has great speed. But you see initially... Just the amount of white jerseys that seemingly, and there's going to be another one come from over here, in position to make this play. How you don't get this man to the ground is beyond me. Disappointing to see that many white jerseys around an Ole Miss player with the ball in his hand on just a, basically a tight end dump, basically a release route off of a blitz that you know I've got to get rid of this football quickly. So these are the things moving forward when you talk about playing A&M, playing Georgia, playing Alabama, that if you don't clean these up, there's going to come a point in time that you're not able to score enough points if your defense is continuously giving up plays like this. All right, Cole, this weekend Auburn's defense gets to go up against Texas A&M. They've been struggling recently. They've got a new uh, quarterback starter in there at this point with Kyle Allen. You know, what, what are the opportunities in a game like this for this Auburn defense who, as, as you've pointed out here, they've got some things to work on still? No, there's no doubt. And you look at some of the what we looked at today, tackling in space, it be something that's big because you're going to get a lot of quick throws, some quick distribution, a lot of screens from Texas A&M. So if you continue getting to the football but not getting an offensive player to the ground, you're going to give up more yards. And then I think continuing to work on that pass rush. It's not a team that's going to run the football right at you. Not a team that's going to try and physically overtake you. So you'll have an opportunity to maybe run some different guys in, go with that four-man pass rush. If there's blitz packages you want to work on, this will be the time to show those as well. Now, you can't let this get away from you either because this is a system, keep in mind, that is still in place. And it's a system that Kyle Allen knows from high school. Well, everyone thought this kid was going to be the starter coming into the season. So the ability is there. The talent is there. Now he has one game under his belt. This is a system that can explode at any time. And even though they haven't been successful thus far this season, really and truly since game three or four, they can turn it on in a heartbeat and all of a sudden put 40, 50 points on the board. So I would say you'll see a little bit more of trying to keep things underneath this defense. Don't get overly aggressive because you don't want to give up big plays and give this offense confidence, something that they're obviously lacking right now. Is there, is there pressure at all, do you feel like, maybe on, on Auburn, especially on, on the defense, let's say, going into a game like this? You know, people have watched a and really struggle the last several weeks. When it comes to this, this playoff discussion about where Auburn should be in the mix, does a game like this become an opportunity where Auburn needs to really dominate in this game just to show that, that – they're playing the way that they should right now? No, I don't think so. I think if you're Auburn right now and you look where you came out at number three in the initial rankings and you really bettered your resume maybe more than anybody else over the weekend, uh, especially the teams that were right up there with you. I mean, Mississippi State had a decent win, uh, but they didn't look great. Right. Florida State had a nice win on the road, but I think they, some people are still going to conjure up question marks as to how they look for the majority of that football game. And, of course, Ole Miss drops out. So we don't know who's going to come in yet. I don't think Auburn really jumps Florida State or Mississippi State. But at the same time, you're surviving in advance right now if you're Auburn. Literally, you win and you're in. Even if Mississippi State were to win out and go to the SEC championship game, I still think if Auburn wins, they're in. So it doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter how it feels. It doesn't matter what the perception is right now. 
Auburn has enough perception in the media nationally that they are a good enough team, a strong enough team, that if they win, they're in. So I say you go out and just take care of business. You don't let the playoff picture, you don't let the mentality and how people feel about it and how it looks and what their perception is. You cannot worry about that. You play assignment football. You go tackle better. You cut down on the penalties. And you just hit people the way that you're supposed to. And it will all take care of itself. That, that's my opinion. All right. Well, we'll be back next week to break down that Auburn-Texas A&M game here on the AL.com Film Room.